Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap of Bears podcast by a Bears fan. I'm your host, Terry, and today doing another player spotlight on tight end Trey Burton. Uh, before we get started, once again, start the Patreon campaign. Check out the description section if you want to go to the website and consider supporting the channel. Also, we're all Bears fans, so if we don't agree, let's agree to disagree politely because we all want the Bears to win. Uh, and it's thunderstorming right now, so if you hear some thunder, I'm sorry. Uh, so anyway, let's get into it. Trey Burton, uh, came to us from free agency, of course, and he came from the Philadelphia Eagles and this was his first year with the Bears. So let's get the stats out of the way real quick. Um, talking about his touchdowns, he had six touchdowns on a year and that was enough to tie him from fourth among the tight ends. Um, as far as receptions, he had 54 receptions, which tied him for 10th. And then yards, he had 569, which tied him for, th- or actually just number 13 out of all tight ends. So if you're talking about out of tight ends, he ranked in the top 15 in all those categories, which uh, on paper looks really good and actually a lot better than I expected when I went in to look at the stats. But if you look at the top echelon of those tight ends, the top three guys or whatnot, then you're talking about a huge disparity. And so you got guys that are, you know, the top tier, their their numbers are, uh, you know, a lot higher. So it's nothing bad at all. Definitely, I think, uh, some really good numbers that he put up. But uh, just keeping the context in mind that, the top echelon are putting up numbers that are rivaling receivers. And so there's that. So what did he do for us in his first year outside of stats? What did I think? Well, for me, I think Trey Burton provided exactly what we thought he would, which is that matchup nightmare that tight ends have become. But with his extra athleticism, it was much more like a big slot. And so... I do think he provided the mismatch against tight end or excuse me, against linebackers and safeties and that he could run routes and get open, uh, better separation against them. Um, But I don't know that he gives you that safety blanket that the bigger tight ends do. You know, he's an undersized tight end. He's six, three. So he's shorter than some receivers. And you're talking about a guy that has all the athleticism to, uh, you know, beat a guy in that way. But as far as boxing out a defender and, you know, using their body to uh, kind of rebound against somebody, you're not going to really get that with Trey Burton. So while it's nice where we can move him around and do different things and get vertical, it's not going to be the same attack uh, across the middle of the field as an outlet. And he's definitely not going to be the same as a blocker. And they use him, you know, in that H um, position, They kind of moved them, you know, uh, did kind of the kickouts, the traps, you know, all those different things. They did use them. And I think he was effective, but he's not uh, really a big time blocker at all. And so um, I I, I think it'll be interesting uh, to see going forward. But like I said, I think he did provide a level of efficiency in that slot that most offenses want right now because there's so much attention being uh, pay to the perimeter that that's where you can really do big things. And again, if you look at the numbers and you might think they yeah, you know, okay, they're decent. You got to realize that we were the 21st passing offense. So we weren't pr- prolific in passing at all. But even with that being said, the numbers are spread out quite evenly across the core. And that was one of the things I was happy about. I was perfectly happy that we are getting the ball throughout the whole receiving core, and I think that makes us stronger, and that no one person is dominating, you know, or being a forced target. And so you got to think that all this goes into context. For him to be put into this whole new offense, uh, or at least put into this whole new uh, uh, roster on the offense, he knew the scheme, but as far as getting into the roster – And then, you know, Mitch trying to fill out all these new targets. I think he performed uh, pretty well. I mean, I definitely give him a solid grade on the season. And I think he was really good for us. Now, going forward, um, there's a lot of talk about him as a as a person, I guess. There's questions about him, uh, 
in his injury, you know, during the playoffs. And there's question about his toughness, his willingness to work. I've heard different things. Nothing that I, you know, was looking up myself, but I just heard people talking about it. And there's a lot of speculation around if he's going to work hard and all these different things. Um, if it's in my face, that's something I, I'll take into consideration. Like, you know, some confirmed that we can all see and hear about. But as far as speculation, I try not to get too much into it and worry more about what I see on the field. But uh, if it came to a point that we heard he was a locker room problem or something like that, then, of course, that would uh, change things. But as of right now, I'm just kind of looking at what he did as a player. And as a player, going forward, I, I kind of struggle with this. Um, but you know what? I'm Right now, I'm a land on starter. So I do the label as far as a starter, um, you know, core piece or excuse me, core player, starter, backup or young piece of building around. I think he's a starter. I was leaning towards core player because the things that he does opens up a lot for everybody else, especially when you're talking about no um, A1 type outside receiver. As good as Allen Robinson has ball skills and all that and can be good, I don't think he's looked at as a top flight A1 option. And so especially when you have that, being able to work the middle, being able to push the mismatch vertical uh, because, look, Travis Kelsey and those guys, as good as they are, they're not going to push the vertical concepts as much as Trey Burton is. And so when you get a mismatch, you can push it vertical. When you can take advantage of all those things that tight ends do, that does open up a lot of stuff on the outside as well. And so I do see him as a key piece, especially when you're talking about Shaheen not really – To me, not having the opportunity, but not really putting it on paper, and I'll talk about him later, I think Trey Burden just adds a different dimension that uh, if he's not in, it won't exactly be the same. But uh, that's just, but one of the things about that as well is that a lot of tight ends can be pretty good. (laughs) I mean, they're, they're coming like running backs, except they're much more valuable right now. But it's becoming that sense where you can have really good tight ends anywhere in a draft. So there's a battle there for me as far as calling him a core player. But I'm coming down to a starter, uh, definitely a solid starter for us. Um, if he's healthy, I think, you know, there's nobody on the roster that's going to add more at the tight end position. And so really it's just a matter of of uh, seeing if he gels. I mean, honestly, he doesn't have to be well-liked, you know, best friends with everybody to continue to be on our team. Um, But if if he's a problem child or if he, you know, really is sitting out, even though he played all 16 games, but if he's like, you know, being an injury problem or, you know, a locker room problem, that's a different story. But right now, I think he gives us a lot. He doesn't give us everything the top tight end could give us. So I would never give him top tight end money. But I think for the receiving core that we have, I'm pretty fine with what he does. And so um, I do think there's room for Shaheen to be even bigger. I know we got a lot of receivers, but, you know, I'm fine with Burton in the slot and Shaheen being in line and doing different things there as well. So I'm all good with it. You can see Nagy's just trying to get – playmakers on the field and then that way he could always switch it up and put them in different positions but yeah overall i'm gonna go with a starter so go to the comment section let me know what you think about trey burton uh what do you think about the season what do you think about him going forward thumbs up subscribe share it around get the conversation started check out the patreon and remember stay up and bear down